Hi guys, my name's Andy and uh, I'm going to show you how I make the little silver rings uh, that I use in my um, resin and um, enamel work. Uh, this is uh, a bit of a, a bangle um, that's uh, vitreous enamel and uh, this is two part epoxy resin. I only just started looking at this epoxy resin um, but anyway, what I do is uh, I want to make perfect circles. So I've got some uh, one millimeter wide, uh, zero point two millimeter thick, um, fine silver wire, and then with uh, flush cut cutters, trim the, the end, and then. Uh, I'd measure these and make them the correct size but just for the video the size doesn't matter. Uh, I cut off the uh, the pointy end because you know you always uh, with the flush cut so cutters uh, one side of the cut is nice and smooth the other side isn't. So I turn the cutters around and trim each end to make the rings that I want. I normally do this in my workshop but I want to show you that it's it's not rocket science so I'm doing it on the kitchen table. I'm going to take uh, one of these bits of wire that I've cut off and I'm going to bend it into a rough circle to start with. Something like that. The idea is I want to bring the ends of the strip together to make a butt joint and to close it the same way as you would close uh, a jump ring so that it's actually sprung together. Okay, I've got the uh, the joint, probably way out of focus. I've got the joint of the ring butted together. It's not too bad, maybe not perfect. And what I'm going to do is I've got some uh, copper acetate crystals that are uh, in a little bit of water. I'm going to zoom out a bit guys, sorry. And what I'm going to do is put a drop of uh, copper acetate on the joint. Um, that's what it looks like. Look. Um, I'm going to put a drop of that on the joint and what happens when we heat this the, uh, the the copper acetate forms a eutectic uh, that is it lowers the melting temperature of the silver and when we heat it the surface of the silver will melt and by capillary action it'll flow into the joint. I'm going to be using this um, little creme brulee torch um, and I'm going to be heating it for, from quite a long way away um, from uh, oh, at least several inches um, so I think what I'll do is I'll show you where I'm heating it from and then I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm actually doing um, I like to close the air hole down these things, well this one has a little uh, air hole in it that, um, that's it. There, can you see? You can see all the way through there. Uh, I like to close that down. Sometimes it's hard to light if it's closed right there. And then, right, I'm going to be heating it from somewhere back here. Uh, so, oh, two or three inches away but I'm going to zoom in so 
so as you can actually see the joint, at least that's the theory. And you'll see what will happen is the water will boil off out of the um, uh, copper acetate. The copper acetate will go black and then it'll go red like a bit of charcoal and then uh, very very gently I'm trying to get the heat in both sides of the joint and then extremely gently don't try this in bright sunlight because you won't be able to see what uh, what's happening um, and then uh, it takes a few seconds there you go did you see that silver flash so now there very little heat content in this um, so what we can do now, am I still in, in focus um, what I'll do is put that on the mandrel I was very lucky. Um, uh, I've never seen anybody else do this before, and the the first time I did it, it worked well, just just as I did there. But the next <laughs> eight or ten times I did it, I melted the uh, the wire every single time. Uh, but I knew I'd done it once, so I knew it could be done. Um, but there you go, there's the ring, you could pickle it uh, to clean it up a bit or maybe just give it a, a little rub over with uh, a bit of emery. What I do is uh, I always uh, flatten it a little bit, just uh, this a bit of uh, emery cloth or em emery paper and I just give it a little rub so that when I put that onto my either into a mould bits of silver every when I put it into a, a, a mould or if I using it with my cloisonne work it, it's it's nice and flat um, if you want to change the shape of it of course I've got these little mandrels I've made some mandrels but I've bought these um, that'll just pop onto there um, that fuse joint is so strong it doesn't matter where you bend it it's not soldering it's actually fusing my bit of cardboard gone okay so that's it's um, not a very good heart but you, I'm sure you get the idea uh, or if you want to make it square here I've got a square mandrel so this is uh, the same bit that part is going on there I say don't try and do it in in sunlight this room is a bit bright you you simply won't uh, you won't see what's happening and you're you'll melt it but uh, I say if uh, if I can do it at 75 then I'm sure most of you out there uh, are younger than me so you shouldn't have any trouble in doing that but I say it's extremely useful um, these are some different rings I've made. You can make whatever size you want and you can make whatever shape you want and uh, that's allowed me to make some lovely things. Uh, this is uh, uh, resin, uh, two-part epoxy resin. I only just made this a couple of days ago and this, believe it or not, this is the first piece of uh, resin that I've cast uh, as a sort of hobby thing 
in uh, 53 years. Um, but I was very pleased with how that worked out. But what I wanted to do was see if I could get a similar effect with the resin to that that I get with my enamel work. Obviously the enamel, wouldn't, this piece would last for, uh, well, 2,000 years. I don't think, I don't think a resin item would last for 2,000 years. But hopefully you can see these, these beautiful circles uh, uh, are really, that, they're perfect. I see uh, professional uh, enamelists that make something and you can see the, the circles aren't closed properly and uh, uh, they leak. This, this piece I'm showing you now, the eye, when I uh, put it together the uh, ring around the pupil was a perfect circle but as I've heated it uh, multiple times it's actually changed shape and it's uh, it, and it's it's a bit bit of a shame really um, and and that's why I thought well there's got to be another way of doing it and that's why I practiced uh, and uh, you know worked it out to to do this um, these are some little uh, resin earrings uh, that I made. Um, I say I've only made four items with the resin and, uh, and, and you've seen them all now. Uh, but my enamel work, um, uh, I like this sort of thing. Um, these shapes again, um, uh, each of these loops uh, was uh, made the way I've just shown you is just a larger a length of uh, cloisonne wire. I so say I made these loops as a continuous loop and then bent them to get the shape that I wanted. It means I don't get any leakage of the uh, enamel or um, the resin out of the loop and into the, uh, the body of the piece. Anyway, I hope you find that interesting. Um, got into making uh, silver jewellery uh, back in uh, 2023. And uh, I just love to make things that are different. I, I, I don't copy anybody. I, I make my own designs. Um, that's a, a little brooch. Um, and... Uh, uh, that's a pendant. Uh, you can see I, I list everything that I make and put it on Pinterest, not for sale, uh, but just to um, hopefully inspire other people to have a go. I do sell my work, but that's not what I'm uh, setting out to do here. Um, I make the, the hook and eye myself. I just love designing and making things. Um, this is one of my <laughs> latest uh, efforts. I, um, I, I wanted to make bright uh, jewellery just, just for the fun of it. And uh, I bought some acrylic rod and thought, what can I do with that? So I drilled it and made that. So that's sterling silver and, um, and acrylic. Anyway, um, what else can I tell you? Uh, the... Uh, copper, copper acetate, that's it. I bought this uh, back in 2024. That's 50 grams. Uh, <laughs> that's, um, uh, that's a good lifetime supply, I should think, for anybody. Um, if you want to see what I make, um, uh, I put everything on Pinterest. If you search for Andy Davis by the sea, all as one word, and then uh, look for um, uh, Pinterest and uh, things I've created. You'll find everything I make there. Let me know if you find this useful. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.